Morty, we've got to go back. I was going to do the same link. I was going to sing What's the Song? Don't need money, don't need time, don't need no credit card to burn it down. I was, mate, that is weird. We were going to go yeah. down the same same path and we didn't plan that. And Just people two listening guys are thinking, going down the same path. If you know people I mean. are listening thinking, I don't know what path they're going down. But if you've heard that song and you've heard Zack say Marty, we're going back to the future. Yeah, Desired baby. Desired future. Desired future state. Could be called many things. Could be. Could be. And Jack, you know, we're, we're fans of Gap Selling over at We Have a Meeting. Mm-hmm. We're fans of Sandler. We're fans of anything that's going to make us better. Desired future state. It's something that I thought, this needs to be involved in the approach. But I think there's some refinement, some wham refinement that's happened over the way. I don't know if it's unique to us. I don't know if it's something that I've picked up from reading into therapy. That's I don't know if it's it. something I've picked up in the bedroom. But I'm here to find out. So, Jack, desired future state, what is it and why is it important? So I'm going to probably hit it from a, like a, a gap-selling point of view. If we know where they are, we've got to know where they want to be because that's the size of the gap. But why? If I'm, if I'm over here on one and I only want to be at one and a half, the chances are that's not a big gap. I'm not that motivated. I can do it myself. Why am I going to invest time, money, and effort to get there? If the gap is I'm over at one, I've got to get to step 100. That's a bloody big gap. Let's get there. There's also another conversation to be had with with desired future state in terms of like expectations and like managing a client. But but maybe we can hit that on the on the flip. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, desired future. Surely you're not going to say to someone, "All right, Mister Prospect, what's your desired future state?" Because it doesn't pass what test. The pub test. The motherfucking pub test. And the pub test is basically, if I ask someone that question in the pub, my friend, a stranger, a family Mm -hmm. member, would they turn to me and say, what the fuck are you talking about? And if I said to someone, okay, well, you want to be going out tonight and having a big night out, what's the desired future state that you're looking for? The girl, what are you on about? Right? Mm. So... What other ways of asking about desired future can we do that pass that pub test that don't get us funny looks? Okay, Zach. Well, let's fast forward to tomorrow morning and we look back on the night. How do you know you've had a good night? What's happened? And that's it. And that's called active listening. He listened to my scenario and he based it on that. And that's exactly it. It's here's where you are now. Let's fast forward to the future. So now we're, we're now we've got the gap between now and the future. If we're in there, how do you know it's working? There's no me persuading you of what will happen mm-hmm. in those times. It's based on your expectations. Now, Jack, you alluded to this earlier. There's now a piece, and I've started calling this desired future state picture the realistic future state, because. We've had it in WAM, certainly in the early days when we're getting, getting the ball rolling. Sometimes people's expectations are not only unrealistic in terms of maybe output, number of meetings might be in our world, but their expectation might be something that we even don't do. Mm. It's, so it's the expectation equation. It's, it's, it's happiness in a nutshell. So like, has your reality hit the expectations? When, before I became a dad... Do you remember a few months before I was saying to you, my expectations are it's going to be the worst thing in the world. It's going to be so hard. I'm not going to get any sleep. Yeah. And now, what have I said? It's, it's literally worse. the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I always remember with you that when you did the um, the marathon, and you voice noted me halfway through a marathon. And I've, I've known a few real loser virgins who've done marathons before. sorry i've known a few people who've done <laughs> marathons before but i remember your voice that me a halfway through going son this is the easiest thing i've ever done it's so easy but that must be because your expectations were that it was going to be so hard mm. Mm. and i think so I th- the, the, to bring to bring this back to sales what a lot of sales people have the habit of doing is selling a dream so you hear that all the time mm-hmm. selling a dream but what is that well it's Everything's going to be rosy. It's going to work straight away. You're going to see results straight away. I've set you up for perfect. Your expectation is perfect. 
if the reality that hits that is anything other than perfect, what do you feel like? Mm, disappointed, upset, yeah. frustrated. But actually, it might be good. It might be good. Mm. It just might not be perfect. And so I think you can do understand that piece. Yeah, I think I think for any salesperson, if you're selling a service, especially and you're going to be working with them, there's all, and even with SaaS now, there's that customer service piece all the way through where salespeople, and I've seen them, they just get it over the line. They say, yeah, we can do X, Y, and Z. And then it's left to customer service. It's like, at the end of the day, in, in sales, you're playing the long game. You want customers for life and you want, you want people to recommend you word of mouth referrals, all of that. Managing the expectations, people knowing what the actual future state looks like they're probably more likely to buy as well because of their negative bias. If you sit down, Dak, and you tell me how perfect it is and how wonderful it is, my negative bias is going to be kicking in going, mm, something's dodgy here. Whereas if you, if you lay down a really realistic view of this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, it's it's probably going to match a little bit more, more, more yeah. with the realism. Yeah, exactly. There's three characters we talk about that you can be in a sales setting. There's the actor, the lawyer, and the idiot. You can mm. interchange lawyer and idiot quite a lot with the unrealistic future state. But I had a guy once tell me, this is a true story. He said, our average order value is almost a million pound. I'd know this was working if after a month we had one of those deals through. So imagine, you know, let, let's over egg it. He's saying, I want to make a million pound in a month. Okay, so that was his expectation. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, well... It sounds like that's happened before. And he was like, what do you mean? Well, it sounds like you've either had someone cold calling internally or used an agency like ours to do cold calls. You've booked, sat, and closed a million pound deal all in the space of one month. And he said, no. Okay. Now I've got a really tricky question to ask, and maybe I'm being an idiot. Yeah, go on. Well, if that's never happened before, how do you know it can happen? And then he moved. He was like, well, okay, well, we, if we were having good conversations in the first month, mm-hmm. and that's a different, like, what are good conversations? And, and the conversation goes on from there. But it's important if it feels unrealistic to move slightly because you don't want to start making false promises, everything will come out upstream. And you'll mm-hmm. be that guy who booked the meeting for the AE. The AE got it over to the customer success team. It's just gradually building little bits of of false reality that like, like chinese gonna... whispers isn't it it's gonna it's gonna snowball into something else <sighs> i don't um, think chinese whispers and snowballs go together no maybe not have you ever seen the movie dude where's my car no i've seen dudes where's my car right okay there's a there's a scene where there are a takeaway and i think i'm gonna get this right or i might absolutely <laughs> crucify this and feel free to right in the comments but there's a, a scene where they're in one of those like drive through takeaways and she's going and then and then uh, do you remember yeah. does that ring any bells yeah. you've seen that yeah exactly uh, we were talking about this what why would that be relevant to the desired future state <clears throat> i'm glad you've asked me that actually i'm really glad you've asked me that and i love the segue and actually i do like you quite a lot i shouldn't say <laughs> it to you but i do um because Often what happens is we paint this picture so we find out the desired future and your bias plugs the gaps. So that, again, it's, I love these like schoolyard questions. How do you know that's a problem is how I mm. like to get the impact. But when I get that desired future and they say, well, I know it was working because we have X amount of meetings in the diary, we'd be talking to more of our ICP, the, the SDRs would be busier. You make an assumption there. But the obvious question to ask is an and then question. Okay. And, and then what would happen? Because I'm looking for longevity in the relationship. Mm. Well, then we'd be closing more deals. We'd be, and another way to ask this is, okay, this might sound like this really silly question, but compared to now, what would be good about that? Mm. And I'm getting you to almost like root in on the spot. You know, this thing we talk about sales, we'll move from question to question. I'm getting you to say like, right, we're in that world now. Dig, talk dig, to, dig, 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 dig. Talk to me about it. Justify it to me. Tell me more. It's, it's so therapeutic because it's like somebody comes into it, it's just one of the, like what do you mean and then they're probably the best sales questions of all time so you come into a therapist and you say i want to quit alcohol okay and then what yeah well i, I quit alcohol like I've, I've got a clearer conscience okay and then what well i probably won't be hung over i'll be able to go to the gym i'll be able to lose the weight okay and then what 
or I'll probably find a partner. So then, and then we get into the des- the real desired future state is yeah, I want to I want to quit alcohol, but actually alcohol is probably one of the root causes. So what what is the desired future state? I want I want a family. I want to be happy. I want to feel content. Okay, so like it's it's more like breaking down. You quit alcohol, then what? Okay, you get more meetings, but but then what? And it's it's the same. Okay, you get a better data provider, and then what? So what do you mean? And then and then what? Exactly, exactly. Interesting closing point here. Gap selling. When we've had people on the pod who've done gap selling before, have told us that it's based on Alcoholics Anonymous. Hmm. It's not based on some sort of selling methodology. It's based on a, how do I get to a problem, a desired future and find the motivation to, to move? Um, look, I've definitely been Zach Thompson. I don't know who you've been. Mm, I feel like I've been Jack Frimpson, but sometimes I feel like a woman. So there we go. The jury's still out on that one. I'll see you next time. And if I don't see you through the week, take care. <laughs>